Good morning, everyone. Thank you for braving this morning on a very wet um, autumnal morning, but welcome to our harvest celebration this morning. Just to let you know a few notices just to bring to your attention. Next Saturday, we've got the working party, um, 10 o'clock here, and there's a note in the newsletter, which I hope you've all received. If you haven't got, if you haven't received the newsletter, come and see me after the service and I'll make sure um, we get that sent to you. So the working party is coming here next Saturday, 10 o'clock, and there are details of all the jobs to be done. And if you could bring the tools that are listed there, it would be much appreciated if you have them. The other thing to let you know is that we are reviewing the sick list that we read out during the intercessions. So if you could let David James or Betty Taylor know who you wish to remain on the sick list, otherwise we'll be reviewing it and removing names that probably people have got better. Um, I think that's all our notices and the electoral roll, if you want to be added to the electoral roll, it actually closes the deadline is at the end of this service, so you could please post your applications in the red box by the north door as you leave. Thank you very much.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So welcome to our Harvest Festival. This is a Harvest Festival like no other. Uh, hopefully next year we'll be back to normal. Uh, and I, you'll have to forgive me, but I hope later on in the service as we get to the talk, you can connect with your inner child because my talk is revolved around children. Never mind. There we go. If you have brought harvest gifts and have not yet placed them on this table, would you like to come forward to do so now? Good. So, the harvest is a celebration of the goodness of God in creation. All those wonderful things that we enjoy day by day by day. But of course the harvest is a kind of bittersweet celebration because we know that humankind has abused the created order. And we know that there are people going hungry when our supermarket shelves are stacked to capacity. So as we think about our own sins and lack of gratitude, we think about the world and we pray that there may be a more just and equitable distribution of the world's resources. So let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So in gratitude to God for all the wonders of creation, we say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sit and listen to the scriptures. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. If you will obey the Lord your God, by diligently observing all his commandments that I command, I'm commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city 
and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is be joyful in God, all the earth. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains, you are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. Be joyful in God, all the earth. You water its furrows abundantly settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with richness. Be joyful in God, all the earth. The pastures of the wilderness overflow, the hills gird themselves with joy, the meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Be joyful in God, all the earth. The second reading is taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. Gather the fruit for eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you.
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. Indeed, your heavenly Father knows you need all these things, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down. So this is the moment where I'm going to ask you to get in touch with your inner child. And I was going to ask uh, all the children to see what words they can make up from the letters behind me on the chancel screen. Goodness. So if you can think of a word, then just shout it out. Uh, I'm going to start. Dense. Dense. Anybody else got a word out of the letters that make up goodness? Send, brilliant. Anybody else got any? Yeah, as, as, there can be two letter words if you want. Yes, brilliant. Anybody else down there? Love. I can't move from here, by the way, because I'm on the camera. D O N E. Done, brilliant, fantastic, excellent. There's some very simple ones up there like go and so, and even good. It's a giveaway. Yes? Brilliant. Well, we're going to use those words, those letters rather, as an acronym like VAT or MOT or HMRC. I tell you, in the educational world, absolutely everything is put down to acronyms like SATs and all those sorts of things. So let's think about the word G. G is for grateful. I often say at the beginning of school masses when there are a lot of kids there who really don't want to be there, who don't believe the Christian faith, I say the thing that unites us or could unite every single one of us, no matter what we believe, is an attitude of gratitude. Actually, we, we just go through life taking stuff for granted. You know, maybe to think at the end of each day, who am I grateful for? What experience has touched me today? Gosh, it could be a game changer, a total game changer, not least for us in these wearisome times, to have a sense of gratitude. I have a sense of gratitude. I have a sense of gratitude for you, dear people, bringing these things for others. It's great. I have a sense of gratitude for you being here at all. If we cultivated a sense of being grateful to God for the things that have happened to us during each day, I think life would be very different for us. So O stands for obedience. Part of the Christian faith is about being obedient to the teaching of God that we find in the Bible. 
A lot of the Bible talks about how we need to praise him, how we need to care for others, how we need to repent when we've done wrong. So it's important to be obedient. God deserves it. After all, the creation itself is the outpouring of God's love. He didn't have to make the world, did he? He chose to make the world. And he gave it to us as a gift for us to cherish and honour and value. So let's be obedient to God's call that we should give thanks to him for all the good things that are around us. Uh, second O, let's have the word opportunity. I often say again in my ministry in schools that our sins are more often than not the things we haven't bothered to do rather than the things we've done deliberately. You know, seeing a person in need and not responding to that need, that's how it is. Opportunities present themselves every single day of our lives for us to be there for other people, for us to share what we have with others, to show goodness and kindness so that we might become more like our Lord Jesus Christ. And D stands for donate, you're already doing it. Donating to others could become the habit of a lifetime. There must be things in your house that you no longer need. I have two houses, and there are lots of things in one of them that I no longer need. Well, I should give them away, surely. But we give ourselves away in so many different ways. We give our time, we give our money, we give our material things, we give ourselves away because in giving ourselves away, we find ourselves. That's the paradox of the Christian faith. N, obviously, is nourishment. It means providing people with food which is necessary for life, for them to go strong and healthy. So we give thanks for all the nourishment that we are provided with every single day. Some of you know I have an allotment and gosh, it's kept me sane during lockdown. But heavens, the produce that my allotment has provided, fantastic nourishment, fantastic nourishment. I have an amazing sense of gratitude for it. We need it, but we need to share it. E, the earth. Virtually many, many things that we are nourished by come from the earth. And God tells us to care for the earth, to look after creation from the soil to the animals to humankind. Two S's, one S for sharing, kind of obvious. And the second S, for special. In Genesis, we read that when God created everything he made, he said, it was good. He made each living creature special and unique with life and a purpose. Every one of us is special to God, unique, loved by him, called by him. So there we are. We celebrate today the goodness of God in creation. We celebrate too the goodness of God in one another. But most especially, we celebrate the goodness of God in sending our Lord Jesus Christ among us to free us from our sins and to give us the gift of eternal life. We stand and proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. response to each bidding as we all say together hear our prayer God the beginning and, and end of all things in your providence and care you watch unceasingly over all creation we offer our prayers that in us and all your people your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life. For farmers and agri agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other. Enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds, that their labour may be for the welfare of all. Lord of all wisdom, hear us. We pray for the governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are, who are ill, 
remembering those in hospital, in nursing homes, all those known to us, and all those who we regularly pray for. We pray for all who care for them, give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. Lord of all compassion, hear our prayer. Remember those who have died, particularly remember the soul of Morris Bolden recently departed. And all those who have died recently, whom we entrust your eternal love in the hope of all of resurrection to new life. Lord of all peace, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfill your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them, and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's acknowledge each other in some way or other. So we come now to the offertory and first of all we're going to ask God to bless these gifts that you have so kindly provided for those in need. God our creator who never ceased to bestow your boundless fruits from the rains of the heavens and the riches of the soil we thank your love